Welcome to the Medical Zone. This is a re-upload of a previously made video which used a robotic voice. Gastri, cholecystokii, secretin, motility and gastric inhibitory. This needed some improvements. In this video, five hormones will be discussed that play important roles in the regulation of digestion in the gastrointestinal tract. First, we will shortly discuss some basic principles. With over 30 different hormones identified as being produced in the gastrointestinal tract, the gut has been described as the largest endocrine organ in the body. For the purpose of a correct definition, hormones are chemical messengers secreted into blood that modify the physiology of target cells. So, hormones are not secreted into the lumen of the gastrointestinal tract, but into the circulatory system, which will transport them to their destination. The definition of a target cell for a particular hormone is a cell that has receptors for that hormone and can thus respond to it. The endocrine cells within the gastrointestinal tract are referred to collectively as the enteric endocrine system. Some of the best studied enteric hormones are gastrin, cholecystokinin, secretin, motilin and gastric inhibitory peptide, which is also known as glucose-dependent insulinotropic peptide. These are the five hormones that will be discussed in this video. Another thing you must realize is the following. In contrast to endocrine glands, like the anterior pituitary gland, in which essentially all cells produce hormones, the enteric endocrine system is diffuse. Single hormone secreting cells are scattered among other types of cells, in the mucosa of the stomach and small intestine. Now you know the basics, let's have a look at the various roles of the before mentioned main hormones. So, on this picture you can see a basic overview of the different parts of the gut that we will be talking about. The esophagus, the stomach, duodenum, jejunum, liver, gallbladder and the pancreas. So, the first hormone we will discuss is gastrin. The primary action of gastrin is stimulation of gastric acid secretion. Gastrin is secreted by G cells. These are located in the antrum of the stomach and actually some in the duodenum as well. It is secreted in response to stimuli associated with ingestion of a meal, such as distension of the stomach, the products of protein, and gastrin-releasing peptide, which is released by nerves of the gastric mucosa during vagal stimulation. The primary action of gastrin is stimulation of gastric acid secretion. It binds gastric receptors found predominantly on parietal and enterogrammafin-like ECL cells. Because gastrin and cholecystokinin have structurally many things in common, the gastrin receptor is also one of the receptors that can bind cholecystokinin and is known as the CCKB receptor. It is a member of the G-protein coupled receptor family. Stimulation of ECL cells by gastrin leads to histamine release and histamine binding to H2 receptors on parietal cells is necessary for full-blown acid secretion. Thus, fully stimulated acid secretion by parietal cells occurs when gastrin binds to the gastrin receptors on parietal cells, along with histamine, which is derived from ECL cells. Let's get back to gastrin. Apart from the described function, gastrin also has some minor additional functions, like stimulating parietal cell maturation and fundal growth, pepsinogen secretion by chief cells, stimulating pancreatic secretions, and gallbladder emptying. Now, let's move on to the second hormone called cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin is the principal stimulus for delivery of bile and pancreatic enzymes into the small intestine, hereby stimulating the digestion of fat and proteins. As mentioned previously, cholecystokinin and gastrin are highly similar peptides. Cholecystokinin, also CCK, is secreted by specialized gut endocrine cells, called eye cells, in the mucosa of the duodenum and jejunum, mainly in response to digestive products of fat, fatty acids and monoglycerides in the intestinal contents. CCK mediates various functions in the small intestine. 
stimulates the acinar cells of the pancreas to release digestive enzymes and stimulates the secretion of a juice rich in pancreatic digestive enzymes. Together these enzymes catalyze the digestion of fat, protein and carbohydrates. CCK also causes the increased production of hepatic bile and stimulates the contraction of the gallbladder and the relaxation of the sphincter of IE, resulting in the delivery of bile into the duodenal part of the small intestine, where the bile in turn plays important roles in emulsifying fatty substances, allowing them to be digested and absorbed. Cholecystokinin also inhibits stomach contraction moderately. Therefore, at the same time that this hormone causes emptying of the gallbladder and pancreatic secretion, it also slows the emptying of food from the stomach to give adequate time for digestion of the fats in the upper intestinal tract. Cholecystokinin is also produced by neurons in the enteric nervous system and is widely and abundantly distributed in the brain. A nice fact worth sharing is that the name cholecystokinin has a nice origin. It means to move the bell sac, so the gallbladder. Also, CCK secretion is regulated by a feedback mechanism. Digestion and absorption of the ferry molecules that stimulate cholecystokinin secretion will lead to decreased CCK secretion. An interesting fact to know is that when given high enough doses, gastrin and CCK can produce all the effects of the other. The third hormone is secretin. Secretin functions as a type of fireman. In response to acid, it stimulates the pancreas and bile ducts to release a flood of bicarbonate base, which neutralizes the acid and the secretion of secretin is turned off. Secretin was the first gastrointestinal hormone discovered and is secreted by specialized enteroendocrine cells called S cells in the mucosa of the duodenum in response to acidic gastric juice emptying into the duodenum from the pylorus of the stomach. Secretin has a mild effect on the motility of gastrointestinal tract and acts to promote pancreatic secretion of bicarbonate which in turn helps to neutralize the acid in the small intestine. This will enhance the action of intestinal digestive enzymes. It has a direct effect on the pancreatic acinar cells as well as the duct cells. There is also a vagal mediated secretory response. Secreting results in a bicarbonate rich pancreatic secretion. Apart from this main stimulation of bicarbonate released by the pancreas, a similar but quantitatively less important response to secretin is elicited by bile duct cells, resulting in additional bicarbonate being dumped into the small gut. Also it stimulates pepsinogen secretion from the stomach by chief cells. As acid is neutralized by bicarbonate, the intestinal pH rises toward neutrality. Secretin is sometimes also referred to as nature's antacid. Number 4 is called motilin. Motilin is released cyclically and stimulates waves of gastrointestinal motility called migrating motor complexes, which move through the stomach and small intestine every 90 minutes in a fasted person. Motilin is secreted by endocrine M cells in the duodenum and jejunum during fasting. And the only known function of this hormone is to increase gastrointestinal motility. These M cells are by the way not the same as M cells in Bayer's patches, of which you might have heard before. Motilin secretion is inhibited after ingestion of food by mechanisms that are not fully understood. At low pH it inhibits gastrin motor activity, whereas at high pH it has a stimulatory effect. These bursts of motilin secretion are like housekeeping contractions, which sweep the stomach and small intestine clear of undigested material. Last but not least, we will have a look at the hormone gastric inhibitory peptide. It stimulates insulin secretion in a glucose-dependent manner and inhibits gastric acid secretion and motor activity of the stomach. It is a hormone that is produced by the enteroendocrine K cells, which are mainly located in the duodenum and proximal jejunum. It is also released into the circulation in response to fatty acids and amino acids, but to a lesser extent in response to carbohydrates. You can remember that it's the only hormone released by all three major types of food. The only action that is known to be physiologically significant is the stimulation of insulin release in the presence of glucose. This hormone is responsible for the finding that an oral glucose load is cleared from the blood more rapidly than an intravenous glucose load of the same magnitude. For this action it has also been referred to as glucose dependent insulinotropic peptide. It stimulates insulin secretion in a glucose dependent manner. And, as its name implies, gastric inhibitory peptide inhibits gastric acid secretion. 
Also, it has a melt effect in decreasing motor activity of the stomach and therefore slows emptying of gastric contents into the duodenum when the upper small intestine is already overloaded with food products. Okay, this is the end of the video. If you have any suggestions for next videos, please leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and uh, if you think it was helpful or want to see new videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Bye!